Hello and welcome to LSJ News. It's 1.30 and I'm Thomas Barley with the latest stories here in Lincoln. Police and Crime Commissioner for Lincolnshire is calling for tougher punishments on drink driving. A Freedom of Information request by LSJ News found that although the number of recorded incidents of drink driving in Lincoln dropped significantly in 2016, figures across the county increased from the previous year. Louise Brooks has more. Since records became available in 2011, drink driving incidents in Lincoln have been at their lowest level. However, figures across the county have actually increased in the past year. The current punishment for driving while above the legal limit includes an unlimited fine, up to six months imprisonment and a ban for at least one year. According to some people, this punishment is not sufficient in preventing the number of drink driving offences. At the moment there are you know, parts of our nation, if you go to Scotland, they've got a zero tolerance policy on alcohol uh, when driving. Now that is an interesting way of looking at it and uh, potentially that would drive change because I think there is this perception that oh, I'm alright if I have a pint or two. The reality is your driving is impaired if you drink, full stop. So I do think the, there is a reason to look at it again. In 2016, figures for the number of people caught driving under the influence of alcohol dropped to 135, but according to Lincolnshire Police, this is not a true representation of the issue. You'll probably find that you will always have over a period of time a statistical blip. I fear that this is exactly that. When you look at the whole county figures, they're actually up slightly in 2016 than they were in 2015, so I don't think it's, it's necessarily a sign of improvement. There is an unquestionable link between the number of road traffic collisions and drink driving and Mark Jones believes it is an area of priority for Lincolnshire Police and will remain so into the future. Louise Brooks, LSJ News. The number of Lincoln City supporters arrested at home and away football matches is at its lowest point for eight years. A Freedom of Information request by LSJ News reveals that so far this season, police have made the lowest number of arrests since figures became available in June 2009. Our reporter, Anil Lal, has more. On the pitch, it has been one of Lincoln City's most successful seasons in their history. They lead the way in the National League, they were FA Trophy semi-finalists, and, of course, they gripped the footballing world after famously progressing to the FA Cup quarter-finals before being knocked out by Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. However, off the pitch, it has also been one of City's most successful seasons, at least in their recent history. According to Lincolnshire Police, there have been just four Imps fans arrested since the beginning of the campaign, which is a 60% decrease from the last one. Since Lincoln have been relegated to the National League, or the conference as it was, not many risk groups, as in which is the new name for hooligan groups, have travelled to Lincoln really. Although Lincoln have remained quite an active group and travel away, there's not many groups have travelled here really. So I think that has a bearing on the um, and also the work that we do in securing banning orders and, yeah. um, and securing arrests. Over the past eight seasons, the number of arrests that has been made has fluctuated year on year. 16 arrests were made in 2010, which was double the previous year. However, this marginally declined in 2011 before reaching an all-time high in 2012. 2013 still saw a relatively high number of arrests, despite a slight decline, before a new record was made in 2014. This more than halved by the end of the last campaign, and with four arrests so far this season being the lowest figure on record, it seems Lincoln City fans are on their best behaviour, while their side enjoys a vintage season. Anil Lowell, reporting for LSJ News. Local roads in England and Wales are on the edge of terminal decline, according to a new road maintenance survey released today. The Asphalt Industry Alliance claimed that one in six roads are in poor structural condition, with less than five years of life remaining. Our reporter, James William, joins me. So why are our roads in this state, James? Well, there's a number of reasons why our roads are in this state, and the survey puts it down to a number of factors. The first being ageing road networks. In the East Midlands alone, it takes 55 years for the roads to be resurfaced. Other factors also include underfunding, increased traffic and wetter winters. I went out onto the streets of Lincoln today to find out what the people of Lincoln thought about their roads. 
got a number of potholes outside when we move out of our drive. The thing is, they come and fix them, but all they're doing is just filling them in. They're not, they should cut it properly and then fill them. And they need fixing, people falling, damaging cars, etc. Should have been repaired years back, they've taken all this brass and done now with it. We've complained about potholes, oh, because it's ruining the car and everything. So what's being done to improve our roads in Lincolnshire? Well, the Department for Transport announced last month that they'd give Lincolnshire £35 million in new funding to repair potholes and other problems on the county's roads over the next year. Now, this is a far greater amount than has been allocated to other counties in the East Midlands, underlining how big an issue this is in Lincolnshire. I have contacted Lincolnshire County Council to ask them in detail what they're going to spend that £35 million on, but as of yet, they haven't commented. Thank you, James. Plans to save the NHS money could see low-level prescriptions scrapped. Health bosses have set up a list of 10 medicines including sun creams and gluten-free foods. If the prescriptions are dropped, more people will have to go to supermarkets and health food shops. It's not something I was, I, I knew you could get it on prescription, I wasn't aware of what sort of choice you could get. Mm. So probably going elsewhere, um, supermarkets, or there'll be a better choice. Um, I haven't actually into the pharmacies to see what the choice is but I mean you can get a, a very wide choice now from supermarkets. We do a, a smaller range but you know there's nothing you can't get really that is gluten free. The International Bomber Command Centre in Lincoln has been targeted by thieves for the second time in two weeks. A five metre flagpole and its Union Jack flag which were located at the site's entrance were stolen at some point over the weekend. Lincolnshire Police are urging anyone with information on the incident to contact them on 101. Members of Scottish Parliament will vote on whether Scotland should hold a second independence referendum later this afternoon. The vote was intended to take place last week, but was suspended due to the terror attacks in Westminster on Wednesday. Voting will start at 5 o'clock, and it's expected that MSPs will back Nicola Sturgeon's calls for a second referendum. A new 12 sound sided pound coin has come into circulation today. The coin has been created to tackle the number of counterfeit coins with a hidden security feature. The public are being urged to use their old pound coins by spending them or taking them to the bank before October when they will no longer be legal tender. And in spot, Lincoln City are away to Sutton United tonight. The Imps returned to the top of the National League table following their 3-1 win against their title rivals, Forest Green Rovers. However, manager Danny Cowley understands the threat that Sutton's experienced players could pose tonight. We know that they are, they've got players that can, that can raise their game in, in, in big games. I'm sure they'll see, see tomorrow night as a, as a big game as it is for us. And um, we have to be good enough to, 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 to overcome that. And that's, what being, that's why when, when you win a league, that, you know, it, it's such a great feeling because you've had to play everybody at their best. And after a dull and foggy start to the day, here's Jordan Price with the weather. So there's been some widespread low clouds this morning and it's been quite foggy out too. It's been feeling quite cold with temperatures not getting over 8 degrees Celsius either. It's meant to get a bit sunny this afternoon though, with temperatures reaching about 14 degrees. However, there will be some scattered showers later on and throughout the evening too. 36 knights in shining armour were unveiled for the Lincoln Knights Trail last night to celebrate the 800th anniversary of the Battle of Lincoln. An extra sculpture decorated with the colours of Lincoln City FC was presented to honour the club's amazing season. Our reporter Annabel Ong has more. The hand-painted knights range from local symbols like farming to fairy tale heroes like Robin Hood. The Knights will ride to other cities like London to boost tourism in the city before being placed at landmarks and at newer places for locals to discover in the summer. I think you know, the city has an amazing history and I think you know, as much as tourist visitors to the city, it will be about local people coming out to explore, them, to understand the city and perhaps uh, to find some places that they've never been to before. After the trail, the sculptures will be auctioned off to raise money for a homeless shelter for the Nomad Trust. 
This city is rich in history as it celebrates its 800th anniversary of the Battle of Lincoln Fair and the sealing of the Charter of the Forest. The Lincoln Fair celebrates the sacking of the city when the English beat the French in a great battle. Lincoln is the only place where you'll be able to see one of the Magna Carta side by side with the Charter of the Forest. I'm Annabelle Ong, LSG News. That's it for now. Join us again at 3.15. Bye for now.